There we go. So, good evening everyone. If you are watching this live, I don't think so because I am the only one here. But never mind. So, this show is going to be about uh, my progress here on Code Academy uh, Pro, by the way. Uh, last time I was working on learning Git. You can see it here on my progress bar here. So this is my my custom golden path, you may say. So my second step has been finished already. This was uh, seven months ago when I was not uh, uh, on the pro on the pro subscription plan. Uh, never mind that. So the only thing I was missing this time is the pro section here and we only have external resources here I read uh, the intro to HTML very interesting material here this is actually worth reading this comes from uh, Mozilla Developer Network um, there you go this is open for everyone um, then I proceed to just uh, hold there and wait for this stream by the way so uh, what I'm missing to do are the quizzes here and um, basically just the quizzes because at the end we do have some projects here on unit 7 it's called HTML, HTML and CSS projects and here we do have uh, exercises practical exercises to develop websites like this one here and as you can see I already done, the, I already done this uh, well, there is a lot of work to do here because this is the the uh, the beginning of the project. But yeah, however, I already did all this. Never mind. So I already complete this course. Uh, still, that was a long time ago, seven months already, and it is my intention to review this course uh, right from the start. Uh, the difference now is that this time I'm going to be using Git. Um, if you read the uh, description of the video, I'm going to be leaving the uh, the link to the repository here. It's going to be a public license, as you can see it here. So that doesn't really matter that much at this point anyway. Uh, on this repo, it's called it's called CodeAcademy dash HTML dash CSS. And down here, I'm going to be creating folders uh, with uh, with HTML files and CSS files. I hope uh, to describe every section here, or at least I'm going to uh, I'm going to be creating unit folders to and maybe inside those folders, lesson folders, just to be uh, just to have some kind of uh, organization down here. Uh, but other than that, the main course for this repository is going to be Unit 7, uh, the actual projects, and it's there where I'm going to be uh, uh, committing a lot, by the way, sending commits for every single project here. So this is going to be the fun part, as you can see here, there are a lot of projects here. So let's get work, let's get to, let's get work done here then. So. Uh, stay tuned because uh, today I'm going to be uh, single streaming this course from right from the start to the end. So let's get to it then. Okay. There we go. Let's start with Unit 1 Introduction to HTML and CSS. Mm. So, why learn HTML? Every web page you look at. It's written in a language called HTML. You can think of HTML as the skeleton that gives every web page a structure. In this course, we'll use HTML to add paragraph, headings, images, and links to a web page. In the editor to the right, there is a tab called test.html. This is the file we'll type our HTML into. See the code with, uh, what is this? Less than and um, more than? That's the HTML like uh, that's HTML like any language. It has its own special syntax or rule for communicating. When we press save and submit code, the result stat will add like an internet browser. Examples: Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. 
A browser's job is to transform the code in test.html into a recogniz into a recognizable web page. It knows how to lay out the page by following the HTML syntax. Instructions. So that's pretty much the introduction text. And down here we do have the instructions. Uh, in every lesson, basically, I'm going to be uh, reading this out loud. The introduction text, not so much. But this one here is the important part where I need to complete every single step in order to progress. So to the right, we have test HTML file. Change the text on line two, the bit between a strong and strong. So this, this little bit here, I wonder if you can actually read that. I hope I can make it a little bigger. Uh, I think that's more than enough. Okay, so let's see. Okay, change the text on line two, the bit between a strong and a strong, to anything you like. I do feel strong. And we can actually see the result on the right side of the screen. Hit save and submit code, and you will see how the test HTML file will look in a browser. Did you see that the strong text made our text bold? Okay, submit. There we go. Uh huh. HTML stands for hypertext markup language. Hypertext means text with links in it. Anytime you click on a word that brings you to, to a new web page, you had clicked on an hypertext. A markup language is a programming language used to make text do more than just sit on a page. It can turn text into images, links, tables, lists, and much more. HTML is the markup language we'll be learning. Uh, what makes uh, web pages pretty? That CSS cascading style sheets. Think of it like uh, a skin and makeup that covers the bones of HTML. We learn HTML first, then worry about CSS later in later courses. Uh, the first thing we should do is set up the skeleton of the page. Always, always put doc type HTML on the first line. This tells the browser that what language is reading. In this case, HTML. B. Always put HTML on the on the next line. This starts the HTML document. C. Always put dash HTML on the last line. This ends HTML document. So let's try that then. Go ahead and put uh, the three lines mentioned above into the text HTML, which is now blank. And as you can see here, uh, I already working with uh, with this already done. So this is basically my my uh, zero my point zero skeleton for any document. Here I can actually uh, type something here. Let's try something like this. Uh, hello. You may actually type something and the browser is going to try to render it uh, correctly. We may even try to use, uh, don't worry about the, the text I, I, I am now using. If you don't know them, it doesn't need. Uh, you don't need to know this text at the moment. I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm just testing this anyway. So here, I do have the word hello between H1 tags. This uh, this tag means uh, make this text inside be a header. So this is basically just to just not to make the text a little bolder. Is based. It's actually used to organize your information inside the document. I'm going to use another tag called P, and this tag means that anything inside this is an actual paragraph. So, uh, in the next lessons, I'm going to be learning about this kind of tags anyway. Uh, but I just want to put this uh, there right now. Never mind. So this is my basic skeleton. Let's submit this code and jump into the next lesson. Basic terminology. Okay, I'm going to begin. By the way, this course is available at Code Academy uh, Pro for free. Uh, what is basically under behind the the paid subscription are two things. One are the quizzes, 
uh, are three things actually. The quizzes, uh, the second thing is the, the external sources, uh, and the third thing is uh, the projects, the exercises in Unit 7. All those are just for paying customers, for Code Academy Pro, and I really think it's actually worth it. So, let's continue here. Uh, things inside these braces here are called tags. So, this is a tag, all this is a tag, all this is a tag. Uh, tags nearly always come in pairs, an opening tag and a closing tag, just like this. This is an opening and this is a closing tag. So these are basically twins, twin sisters here. Uh, and doc type HTML, this is an, an opening tag, but this is a special one. Uh, you just need to use this at the beginning of every document. So basically this is my hello world web page. Uh, example of an opening tag is HTML, example of closing tag is HTML, with a dash before it. You can think of tags as being like parentheses, wherever you open one, you should close it. Tags, tags also nest, so you should close them in the right order. The most recently open tag should be the first one closed, like in the example below. And here we have a first tag, and inside that one we have a second tag inside that second tag we had some text then then we close the second tag and right after that the third tag the first tag so basically in a, if i may like to have the word piece in bold for example let's do it i think it's like this i don't remember actually Let's try this, and uh, okay. So the word piece is that uh, I don't remember. Is is the word ball or just? Let me see. Uh, text formatting. Forgive me if I don't remember the actual tag. It's just B. Okay, so let's make B for the bold. There we go. So it's not the word bold actually, it's going to be just B. There we go. So as you can see here, I can use that this tag to make the word piece bold. And if you check this out, I am inside HTML. But I may even like to make this text uh, italics. Let's, ju let's just do that. Let's close italics this way. And there we go. So in line number three, we do have the word piece surrounded, surrounded by the B tag. And this B tag is uh, itself surrounded between italics. So uh, if you want to actually uh, read this a little better, we may create it like this. So we may actually read this way easier. There we go. So as you can see here, in line 4, I open an italic stack that's going to make this word uh, piece like um, incline a little bit. And the bold tag here is going to make this word, uh, well, bold. So this is basically the same text here, just uh, a little easy to read. In this example, I don't really like to make a lot of uh, space in, uh, in a, for a single word, so I'm going to just put this inside one single line, anyway. Uh, looks like I should, I should do this, there we go. So everything is on line 3 here. Let's continue then. Instructions. Uh, should I read everything else? Uh, okay, so we set up a simple HTML file. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the instruction says put the dot .type HTML, I read it. The HTML for opening and closing tags, here is in line 2, and the closing tag is on line 5. Uh, between uh, press save and submit code to see what you have written appear on the page. Okay. Just fine. 
Let's start the next lesson. Uh, make the head. Okay. Everything in our HTML file will go between the opening HTML and the closing HTML tags. There are always two parts to an HTML file, the head and the body. Let's start with the head. The head contains information about your HTML file, like its title. The title is what we see in the browser's title bar or page tab. For example, the title of this page is HTML Basics Code Academy. If we go up here, I wonder if you can actually read that. I don't think so. Well, it actually say there HTML basics, uh, a vertical bar, code academy. Okay. Let's add a head and a title to our web page. If you get a stock at any point, click a stock, get a hint below for an example. Uh, add an opening head tag and a closing head tag. So I already have this here. And on line seven, I do have the closing tag. Between the head tags and the opening tag uh, and closing tag, mm -hmm. add an opening title tag and a closing title tag. So that should be inside head. I may like to make a change here like this. Just do a couple of spaces and then another couple of spaces, two spaces. What I'm doing here is managing my spaces here, you may say it. There we go. I'm adding a lot of white space here. Uh, I'm doing this for to be easier to read this. So as you can see here, HTML is the, is the header that is outside this, I do this to arrange this tag in order for me to actually read it better and make it easier to know who is inside who, no pun intended. So here uh, we do have HTML opening tag here and the closing tag is down on line eight. So inside this HTML, we do have the head tile, the, the head tag here. And inside this head, ta uh, head tag, we do have a title tag with some text with some text here. So this text is not going to appear inside this part here. It's only going to be appearing on, on the tab name here when someone opens this document. So let's submit the code. I guess that's all. My web page. Yes, everything is just fine. Great job. Review an HTML file. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay, so now we're going to uh, check paragraphs in the body. This was what I thought, I, I was talking about this before. Uh, the P tag is basically telling the, the render that this is going to be a paragraph, all this. So we do have here our two paragraphs here, and we do have uh, those paragraphs inside body tags. So body tags belong right after the closing head tag and before the closing HTML tag. So let me see if I can actually arrange this to make it easier to read. I think it's actually good already. Yeah, it's good. Never mind. So here is the basic. Um, this is the basic HTML hello world page. And we can see here that we have uh, the title page the title of the page here inside the head tags. So none of this is going to appear inside the web page itself. And inside the body tags, we do have nothing here yet. So basically, uh, if we cut this, uh, here we have the, this, this same text is going to be translated basically to this. So What's going on here is that if I re, uh, return this uh, paragraph inside, I'm going to be rendering this inside the web page. It's basic. Okay, so here we have some instructions, print hello world or whatever you want. Uh, pretty basic stuff. Uh, remember that all of this belongs to the free course anyway, so you can actually take it yourself. And as you can see, this is very easy stuff. Oh, by the way, uh, I should make a, a shout out to Marco Link 
and to Papa Myth. Thank you for coming, by the way. There we go. There we go. Uh huh. What do we have here now? Submit. My first web page. Okay, I just click next, never mind. But here, we need to set up an HTML file with tags, okay? So in the body section, what the name of the lesson is? Paragraphs and headings, okay? So basically here, the new concept that we are introduced are headings. Uh, a heading is basically uh, a special kind of paragraph that is used to for two things. One, to give special uh, visual formatting to text, and second, to organize the text as a heading for that text. So everything inside, uh, everything right after the heading may consider, uh, you may consider it as part of a single bit paragraph, you may like to call it like that. So basically, if you had been doing essays for school, this is basically your, your header one, header two uh, kind of formatting. So here, we do have a header one, it's called my first web page, and here you can see that the font is really big. Uh, you get a, a really big font here. And right after that, we do have two paragraphs down here. There we go. And that's pretty much it, I guess. Not really something that difficult. More about headings. HTML actually let us have more than one heading size. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess here we do have examples of. Oh, wait. Back to editor. I cannot actually. Let me see. There we go. So this is an example of the web page, I guess. Back to editor, full screen. There we go. Maybe let this no. There we go. So this is an example of the first web page, and as you can see here, we we are using different numbers for the heading. The bigger the number, the smaller the font. By the way, so basically header one takes first priority and every header after that takes second priority. Right here we can try header two and see the changes there. You can see it, it changes here. So, uh, I guess this is just uh, reviewing, what? Uh, your header three tags, I already did. Maybe, oops, maybe I just need to revert that change somewhere uh -huh. there we go okay uh ah okay, okay okay never mind so here this is header two uh, make sure you include your header three tags okay let's try header three header three with a closing tag, maybe this. There we go. So this is the text example I just added here. This is the new one. Next. Using every heading, nice word. Now here, I guess I should just use every single heading here. I already did that. I don't know. It's basically just uh, creating headers from one to six. Uh, add three more headings to the code, making use of header two, four, and six. Mm. I guess I already did that in the past. Yes, there we go. So here is a mid lesson breather. You had done an awesome job. Here is a quick summary of things you had we had learned. HTML. We open HTML files using a browser. Uh, HTML files have a head and a body just like you. In the head we have the title tags and we use these to specify web page's name. Uh, how to make headings and paragraphs. There we go. Add a title between the title tags, create a header tree, size heading in the body. 
Make your heading say anything you want. You don't forget to close it. Create three paragraphs using P tags and fill them with content about cars, your page. Okay, whatever. So, okay. This is not as entertaining as I was thinking it was going to be anyway. Never mind then. Uh, what else do we have here? You are going places. What if you wanted to send the user to another part of your website or another website altogether? You use hyperlinks or links for short. Okay. So here we have the basic formatting for a hyperlink. I already have one here. So basically hyperlinks behave differently than other tags. Uh, the hyperlink tag is A. And after a space, we can actually define a parameter here for, for the A tag to work. So in this case, href, that stands for hypertext uh, reference maybe, uh, is going to be equals and between double quotes, we set, um, how do you call it? Uh, this is uh, basically a link or well, hyperlink and URL uh, link to another website. In this case, it's a Facebook thing, I guess. Uh, maybe I should try to put something else here. Let's see, HTML. Mm. There we go. That should link to my code hamster. Uh, thingy here. This is my uh, TV channel. There we go. So if people actually click that, I guess they should be taken into, let me see, into my own light coding thingy here. Ah, uh, seems fine. There we go. It actually works. Okay, so so those are those are hyperlinks. So it's basically you open an A tag, then right after you click a space, and the href parameter then equals and then between double quotes the URL for the link. Right after that, you close this opening tag. You may type some text, and then right after that the closing tag for the hyperlink. And that's pretty much it. Submit the code. Add in images. So this is pretty straightforward too. You basically need the URL for an image. And you create an image inside this using the EMG tag. The same as before. Open an EMG tag space and the SRC or source parameter is going to be equals to the URL between double quotes of the image. And as you can see here, you may actually define something called, um, I wonder if there is an example later. Uh, there is a ninja here. Let's, let's try that. Paste it. There we go. We do have a ninja now. Mm. Uh, now let's let's make the the image a link. So you may actually create a uh, an image and make it a linked image. Uh, we are going to actually do this because this image is not doing anything. So now you know how to add links and images to your website. Why not make an image a link? For example, and here we have uh, a very simple example. In we create a, an A tag here and we link to somewhere. And inside this link tag, instead of just using text, we may actually create an image tag. And right after that, uh, we get a closing A tag. So. Let's check out the example here. I believe that this is not actually working here. 
We do have a lot of images here. Let me just get rid of this, these things here. Okay. Looks like I was uh, not so sure about this before. Okay, so this is the body tag right down here. And two spaces before that, after that, let's create a link space href equals and uh, I don't know this https double colon slash slash dot tv so I'm going to perhaps I should um, look for I know what I'm going to do I'm going to link to live coding but I'm going to use this image here let's copy uh, okay let's examine this element and a class uh, never mind I just want the URL for this element here let me see I don't see a uh, show me the image tag anyway I know uh, let's check out for images here look at this watch people call live let's use this one so I don't need to download this picture and load it any uh, uh, anywhere else I may actually just just um, let's see the image this is the image here i'm just going to copy the url let me see there we go copy the the address of the image there we go so let's close this now that i do have the address of the image here on line 8 the source of this image is going to be replaced by this there we go let's try to there we go so this is the picture here back to the editor this image tag is inside uh, this a tag here so I just need to close the a tag and there we go we may actually click this here I guess Oops, back to the editor. Okay, let's open it. And look like it's actually working now. There we go. Oh my, I know nowhere to be to be seen here. Oh, oh there we go. There I am. Not featured yet. Eh, never mind. Doesn't really matter. So we are using a link to like coding TV. And we are using this picture here to create pretty much like a visual button. You may call it like that. And this gives us a lot of power here, as long as we do have the assets for images. Mm -hmm. Let's submit the code, continue. Images and links. So between the body tags, add two images using EMH tag. One should be a link. The other should not. The link can go anywhere you want. After your two images, create a link that's just uh, a line of text. It can link anywhere you want. Okay. So let's let's analyze this here. Looks like there we go. There is the first image, and the second image is not even here anyway. Uh huh. So this is an image, it doesn't have a link. So here we do have an image, we do have a link I mean. Inside this link we do have an image. I may actually make it the same image just for practical purposes. Oh. Mm. Okay, anyway. Just for practical purposes, we should make this uh, the same image. It's already have a link to live coding. I guess it's already done. 
let me see this is actually linking directly to my uh, like coding tv channel there we go never mind so i guess it's done already and congratulations well done you know the basis of creating a web page if you are feeling lucky go ahead and tackle the build your own web page project i don't really recommend that at this point let's try look at this sandwiches yay let's get back uh submit code why not congratulations and we just finished the first unit here uh, let's get back internet is going really slow right now I wonder if I'm doing something wrong here never mind okay so what we are going to do next is uh, this is another lesson it's called build your own web page but right now i really would love to try the quiz now i do feel prepared for the quiz so let's see where in your html document should you include this code uh dot die html obviously at the beginning the very first line there we go for this tag to display an image what must you replace the sharp with with uh, the URL for the image, I guess. Uh huh. Give me a first sight. An image URL. There we go. What is the function of the tag below? The title tag. The title tag is going to show the text between this tag into the tab or the main window of the web of the web browser. Okay. Mr. Web page. It stores the web page title for browser and search engine resource. Uh, it shows the server how to in this website. It shows the server how to. It shows the server how to title the website. I think this is it. No. Oh. It was this one, isn't it? Let me. Oh. Okay. Next. What elements will you find inside the body tag? Uh, all these are correct headings mm, yes paragraph links and image adopt type declaration no head and uh, title elements no headings there we go provides the web browser what what is the purpose of this code dot type provide the, the web browser with security information no tells the web browser what language to expect in this case html yes there we go uh, HTML is a markup language. What does that mean? It means that the language cannot be interpreted by a web browser. No. No. Okay. It's, it turns text into images, links, tables, lists, and more. What will happen if you click on this image on a web page? So it is inside uh, a link here. So if I click this image here, I'm going to be taken to this URL here. Hello, you will be redirected to Wikipedia. No, you will be to the no, you will be redirected to this place. Yes. Uh, what happened? What is the difference between HTML and CSS? HTML gives a web page structure. CSS provides a styling. That's pretty much it. Below is a paragraph element. What is a benefit of imputing text into one? Uh, it will not be displayed. You cannot insert text outside of text. It allows the text to be styled. It prevents markup adjustments. Below is a paragraph element. What is a benefit of imputing text into one? That's actually a good question. I'm not really sure. Uh, it allows the text to be styled. I think this is it. There we go. Which of these lines of HTML by default will display the text with the largest font size? By default, it is going to be header one, line one, two, three, line three. And lastly, 
this HTML anchor tag will not work. Why? Okay. Ah, so that's what the A is stand for. It's an anchor. Okay. So anchor href. It is missing double quotes for the for the URL. Uh, closing tag. There we go. Quotation marks. Ah. I may like to retake just for the very first line, just to make it perfect if I already know how. Next, uh, an image URL, uh, the tab below, it shown the server how to title the website. What the? Again, I did that mistake. Wow. It shows the server how to title the website. It store the web page title for browser and search engine results. Okay, it shows the server how to index the website. I don't think so. I would have sworn that this was the correct answer. Never mind. Let's just uh, begin again. There we go. Retake. Okay. The very first line. Uh, an image URL. So. This, I guess, is this one here? It stores the... Oh no, wait, it's this one. It shows meta information about the title. Shows meta information? I don't think so, I don't know. The web title for browser and share in your results. I guess this one? So, what function of the tag below, title, it stores the web page title for browser and search engine results? So I guess the title page is way important other, th order, uh, other than to just uh, appear up here, I guess. Uh, we'll be inside a body tag, uh, headings, paragraph, there we go. Uh, what is the purpose of this code? Uh, that's the browser, what the language is bad. It's Mark, what does that mean? This. What will happen if you click this image on a web page? You're going to take me here. What's the difference between HTML and CSS? HTML gives a web page a structure. CSS provides a styling. Yes. Below is a paragraph element. What is the benefit of imputing text into one? Uh, text to be styled. Uh, line number three. And lastly, why is missing quotation marks? There we go. Up next, uh, HTML basics too. Even though I may like to get bad here. There we go. So now I just took the quiz here. So basically unit one is done, I may say. Mm. I may like to read the external resources later, actually, just to fulfill my obsessive compulsive disorder requirements, obviously. So unit two is about HTML structure using list. I've been using list a lot, by the way. Uh, it's really wonderful. So what would you say if I just rushed this unit too because I already know how to use a, a list but never mind by the way I just review in this course because I already took it it was a long time ago though so let's continue learning more about HTML you want know, by adding title in the head in the body create a paragraph using P I do have in line 4 the title and this is a paragraph there you go Identation is your friend. Oh, that's what it's called, identation. Okay. Hit send, submit the code to continue. As you can see here, the first line, the obligatory one, uh, does not have any identation as the same as the HTML main tag here. They don't have identation. Oh, nice. Okay. So that basically means that everything here ends here. So, Right after that, we do see 
a large tab here. That's pretty much uh, four spaces here. I do use spaces. I don't like to use tabs, by the way. So I do use uh, two spaces, basically, for all my indentation uh, work here. Because that was actually here. I learned that here. Let me see if I can actually see indentation. Uh, media, APS, example, references, uh, indentation, perhaps here. Indentation. Style guide. This is, a, this is not a rule. This is basically a styling guide only. Web developers are often uncertain. Uh, there we go. You can actually read that, I guess. Uh, are often uncertain about the coding style and syntax to use in HTML. Between 2000 and 2010, many web developers converted from HTML to XHTML. With XTML, XHTML, my God. Developers were forced to write valid and well-formed code. HTML5 is a bit more sloppy when it comes to code validation. So best practice, let's look for the information I want. Uh, always declare the document type as the first line in your document. I can actually, I do this every time. Uh, you want consistency with lowercase text, you can use this, okay. Um, uh, it says use lowercase element names. HTML5 allows mixing uppercase and lowercase letters in element names. We recommend using lowercase element names. Mixing uppercase, lowercase names is bad. Developers are using okay. So basically, uh, we are. Uh, this is bad. No all cap or caps bad. Uh, first letter in caps bad. Good everything in lowercase. Close all HTML elements. This is bad, obviously. So this is good. We're closing. Close empty HTML elements. Okay. There we go. So here is the tag like this one does not have uh, a closing tag per se. So you may actually use this to close the tag is you are not allowed to, this is pretty much applied to a tags, to anchor tags and to image tags. Uh, okay, lowercase attributes, but I was looking for indentation. Where is it? Spaces maybe. Why space? Spaces, there we go. Quote attribute values, you have to use quotes if the value contains spaces, no. So there we go, spaces and equal signs. Spaces around equal signs is legal. So this is legal. But the spaceless less is easier to read and groups entities better together. So the recommended thing is not to use spaces between equals. Avoid long line of scores. Blank lines and indentation. This is the this is what I was looking for. Do not add blank lines without a reason. For readability, add blank lines to separate large or logical code blocks. For readability, add two spaces of indentation. Do not use tab. Amen to that. So basically here, I'm validating my own feelings here. Uh, I add in two spaces of indentation and I'm not going to use that. Uh, do not use unnecessary blank lines and indentation. It is not necessary to use blank lines between short and related items. It is not necessary to indent every element. There we go. So this is valid but unnecessary. Obviously this should be in a single line. Uh, this wide space here between header 1, 2 and paragraph is not, re is not really required. This is a little better. Right after the body we do have two wide spaces. We do have a header here. The same, two wide spaces. A header 2 and right after that a paragraph. This is a table example. You can actually read this. The table opens here, closes here. 
a table row and it's going to be defined with the table header of name, table header of description. So this table is going to contain just two, uh, two columns. And right after that, another table row with uh, a table, TD, what is TD? I don't remember. Uh, TD, I think this is uh, the description of the cell, I, I think, the contents of the cell. If I'm not mistaken, uh, we can see here B description of P. Yeah, I think uh, TD is basically the cell. Uh, list example. Uh, so basically, for indentation, uh, I'm going to add two spaces of indentation every time I want to indent something, and I'm not going to use that. Uh, forgive me a little. Bit. So let's get back to actual world now. Ah, forget about Facebook. So do not use, uh, that's my two grains of salt for the indentation. Let me see. Uh, okay, submit code to continue. Start next lesson. Order less, good, now let's get. Let's learn how to make order less. An order less is simply a list that is number, like the one below, oh, forgive me. Okay, so this is very simple here. I do have a heading, this one here. Uh, order list tag opens. Right after that, after some indentation, uh, inside list item tags, I just type the items I need. Those could, this can be text or images, actually. Let me see. Uh, the order list is going, every single list item is going to be a number uh, item here so we can see the numbers here from one to four and the second one is an uh, or it's a second order list actually okay so this is just uh, order list and it's not a really big deal anyway 
Okay, one more order list. Uh, what is this? Header three. We do have a an order list here. Uh, order list. It's just another order list. It doesn't do anything else. Never mind. Okay, an order list are basically the same thing. Instead of using OL for that stands for order list, we use UL. This means an order list. And inside this open and closing tag, we are going to use list items, just the same, to do uh, the list here. So basically, just that. Uh, first thing, second stuff, third, uh, an order list. Uh, in exchange for the numbers, you get uh, this these dots here. You can change it to some other thing, I guess. Uh, by the way, uh, order and lists are often used for for menus. Uh, in when you are when you use them in combination with uh, CSS tree. Okay, let's continue here. What else do we have? Less inside a less. Okay. So what do we have here? Oh, this this is actually a really good example. Uh, in order to get this, when I do have an order list here. And this is the upper one. One, two, here. Okay. So what do we have here? On line twenty-one, create an order list. Twenty-one here. Order list. Okay. Your unordered list. Let's do it here. Unordered list. Uh, your unordered list should have two items, favorite boys. Ah, it's already here. But this should be unordered. There we go. And the closing tag for unordered list should be here. There we go. So, there we go. Okay. Unordered list. So here, inside this, I should change this to order a list, and that was the exercise. That was the exercise. I didn't finish the exercise. Eh, never mind. Favorite boy names. There we go. Submit the code. Continue. Making comments. This is pretty straightforward. Everything you said between this that here. And this closing that here is going to be a comment. So let me see. Uh, comments start with this and end with this. This is an example. There we go. So it's pretty straightforward. I don't think uh, HTML managed to use single line comments. I don't think that's going to be an issue here anyway. Font size. Recall P and P are opening close. Uh, uh huh. An attribute is simply a characteristic, a characteristic or some description for the content in the element. You saw this with SRC in image and href. Okay, so this is these are basically a style. A style is basically just an attribute for the p tag. In the future, we learned that the recommended way to do this is actually not using this but to use CSS to apply the styling directly into the tag that we wish. So, uh, it's still good to know, uh, but mainly we are going to be using CSS. Uh, on line 7, make the text size 10p, okay, so yes, it's okay. Font color is pretty much the same thing. Inside the style, we can actually use color, uh, double, um, two dots green or use the the code color for the color you want here so we are using here green I think we can use yellow that's the same thing it's not that complicated then again uh, this is not really the most recommended way of doing it in the future I'm going to be learning how to use CSS so anyway Okay. Okay, we continue with the form family. 
we cover font colors and font sizes, but we want more power. We want to decide what font type to use. We can do this using font family like this. Okay, so header one, style, font dash family, uh, two dots, Arial. And then we type some text here. So here in line seven, we do have the first example here. Arial, big family, big title. Okay, it's okay. So basically we uh, learn how to use uh, properties for for HTML code here. Uh, your now you control your web page, uh, color and form family pedoni. It's already done here. I guess. Mm. What else do we have? Background color. We can use the background color property here and change it to brown. This is for the body style. So the body of the web page is going to be brown. But in the future, we use this header tree. So this is brown. I look like uh, it's pretty much like a red color anyway. Mm, who cares? So here we do have the yellow color for the order list style. And here we have the list items. Yeah, never mind. Next lesson. Aligning the text. I read this, this. Oh, this is interesting. Text align, center. This is basically just the usage of common properties for text. So you can actually apply those styles inside this. There is a lot of styling information around here, I guess. The styles, there we go. So here, uh, you can actually check the property and value combination for your paragraphs. So I really recommend the reading. Uh, yeah, whatever. The strong words. Here, what, what is going to be used here? Bold the word sing. I did this long before. Uh, strong is basically just doing the word to look like bold. So, strong is this thing. Okay. Strong, busy cake. Uh, two. Okay, two is going to be strong and sing is going to be strong. Eh, whatever. Okay, emphasizes, uh, italicize, emphasis. Oh, so instead of using I and B as my text, I should be using EM. So round words with the opening tag EM and closing tag EM. Be humble and grateful for your newfound powers. Okay, that is already emphasized, emphasized and strong, okay. Uh, this is a summary of everything learned. Okay. Uh, let's just take the quest directly. So this is the second quiz for the HTML and CSS course. This is all new to me. Which CSS attributes are correct to use to fill in the blank line? Text and line. Center left and right. Which what is the purpose of indentation in HTML? Readability, basically. Mm. There we go. It makes the code more readable. Okay. What is this? I cannot read this. What, what's going on? There we go. Which of these statements is true about the code below? Order list, list item mammals. Inside this, we do have an order list, black beer, blah, 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 blah. red tiles, the same thing, okay. Order list will be, will be preceded by a bullet point. No, that's not true. Un order list items will be preceded by a bullet point. That's true. The outermost tag signifies that this is an unordered list. Oh, there must act. No. Uh, unordered list items will be preceded by a number. No. So basically, this is the this is the the one that is actually true. Uh, to change the font family of this heading, which H1 attribute will uh, will you change? Uh, the style attribute. Yes, yeah, it's going to be the style attribute. Why is it good 
practice to write comments in your code to make code more readable to understand your code when you come back to it that's actually the one i think all of these are correct for authors to understand actually all of these are correct there we go uh, how will words wrap in em and strong tags appear on a web page uh, big uh, okay so here strong big is going to be bold big will be bold and so will be italized what is so that's actually true and the last one is by default uh, how will this list appear on a web page and uh, we do have some examples here by the way shout out to Lamar thank you for coming by the way I really appreciate your company here <laughs> so by default how will this list appear on a web page okay by default uh, order list is going to be a number list with George Washington is going to be one two three four uh, no 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 this it's list I think will be number yes and that's it uh, congratulations it was a really simple quiz actually there we go uh, before going there let's get back to the main one here there we go mm -hmm. so now I may like to build my own web page I'm going to get back here because if I recall I wonder if I can reset this code there we go there we go so what I want to do now uh, before continue with the unit 3 I think okay I already did unit 2 uh, unit 3 is already done uh, however uh, I'm missing the quiz here too before continuing, uh, I may like to review the second lesson on Unit 1, build your own web page, and uh, introduce myself to work with Git, since I already learned Git in the, in the past, but I'm not actually using it. If I recall, uh, this lesson includes for myself to be building a website from the ground up. So I'm going to make this uh, part of my repo. I'm going to call it unit one introduction to HTML. Uh, so let's create the repo now. Uh, the repository is in GitHub. It is here. I only have a license. So what I'm going to do is copy this here. I'm going to copy the HTTPS link and let's move to here. I'm using git for windows by the way okay so right now I already inside the repository here so let's do a fetch first there is no changes I guess and now we are going to let's, let's just clear this what I'm going to do is create a new folder and I'm going to name it just as the the lesson I'm going to be working on and that lesson is going to be lesson build your own web page it's going to be inside unit one of the course HTML CSS actually I'm going, I think I need to create a lot of folders here okay let's see uh, here I am on the main one this is the home folder so let's create a unit one unit one unit zero one i might like to call it uh nk there with uh what okay let's just try to do a little help here with this command i want to force uh okay p parents okay so i'm going to be using the uh, parents modifier here so it's going to be uh, nk there create a directory and it's going to be called unit 01 
dash oh be, before before that it's going to be dash p space there we go it's going to be called unit of zero one and we are going to call it build your own web page okay so here it's going to be called build are you going to be using camel case here build your own web page there we go there we go you need one this is going to be a lesson okay looks looks nice looks nice enough there we go so now let's go right into that pretty working directory right now i am on this folder here hello there lamar how you doing my friend thank you for coming hello let's clear the screen unit one build your own web page and there we go so here i may like to uh make a let's change back to the website here let's enter this how you doing lamar by the way good evening i hope you're doing great by the way so i already reset this code uh, this is going to this file is called index.html so I may like to reset reset the code there we go copy the code uh, hit submit actually this is the code already finished I may like to skip this part let's just submit the code here here there we go so this is my actual point zero so I'm going to copy all this text I may like to uh, let's open my atom this is a text editor by the way there we go uh, there is a new file here let's paste all of this here and there we go let's save it I wonder may, where may should I where should I save this save uh, I already here actually there we go and you are going to be called index.html so is this some website to learn to code yes it's actually a website that is teaching me how to become a a, a web developer by the way yeah atom is really nice i actually uh, encourage everyone to test uh, to try different uh, text editors including notepad for windows including gedit on linux uh, I recommend highly uh, Sublime Text 2 and 3. Uh, I, uh, I recommend Atom, by the way. And for terminal text editing, I don't really recommend that for the beginner. You may actually, uh, yeah, I actually use Notepad in, you can actually use uh, text edit on Mac too. It's actually just installed by default yeah <laughs> okay let's save this one here uh, and now we can see that on atom we do have our build your own web page uh, folder here and here is the index html file so if we get back to git here we do an ls we can see here the html uh, file for index here so give the status it's going to tell us that we need to include something so uh, recalling my learning process on git git add and the name of the file and there we go it's already on the station area and now let's do a commit commit with a message and it's going to be called add uh, index.html starting point there we go there we go and we do have a lock here this is the initial commit this is created by default and uh, the second one here is the add index.html starting point there we go Okay, let's clear this 
And let's get back to Atom. No, I mean the website. What is the website? There we go. Uh, okay, so let's make the instructions here. Your web page is blank as the day it was born. Let's add five things. Uh, zero 01, the dot type tag, two, HTML tags, and my head tags, and the title tag, and the body tag. So basically, we are just going to. I wonder if I can actually reset this. Ah, okay. I guess uh, this was already done. There we go. So it should be empty then. Never mind. So for accident, I already created everything here. Okay, so this is going to be my starting point anyway. So I already create the first dot type uh, tag here. This is the main HTML head with the title here. There is another body tag here. Uh, everything seems to be fine. I'm going to be fixing this white spacing here in the future, obviously. Uh, okay, no changes so far. Okay. Okay, okay. I need to introduce. No, reset. I need to copy all this again and paste it here. And there we go. Okay, let's reset this code. There we go. So, create an H1 tag inside your body tags between your opening H1 and closing H1 tags. Type your name for all to see. Okay, so inside the body, I should create, and let's do it here first. Inside this body, I should create a header one, I, I believe. Thank you. Header one. Header one tag and go hamster. Dash header one. Hmm? How do I use this helper? Header one. How do I use this helper? Ah, never mind. Okay, so this should be enough. Let's save it. And this is line nine. So let's get back to the website and here, let's paste it. And there we go. So that little change, this change should be uh, here. Give that index and I get commit with a message add header one with my name on index.html there we go so this commit history here is going to be taking you a step by step on the progress of creating this website or at least this exercise this lesson okay let's clear Let's get back here to the website here. So what do we do now? Continue, reset the code. There we go. So tell us about yourself. Your page is coming along, but it's not telling us much yet. You could use a paragraph or two telling your readers what your interests are and what you do for a living, how much you love learning HTML and so on. Uh, instruction, insert, insert three, paragraph tags after your header one tag but before your closing body tag write a little bit about yourself and each of the three paragraphs you you can say whatever you want is your web page okay so let's get back to here and uh, down here I'm going to be creating a p tag how do I use this uh, this helper here because if I press enter Yes, a space? No. Yes, I want to use that. How do I use it? Yes, it's a... Uh... Okay, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to be... I want to close this. Dash P. 
Yes. <sighs> Never mind. Okay. So now inside this paragraph, I may like to use I am a software. student that's going to be my first paragraph the second one should be oh we heard something okay 6 p.m already okay guys i am about to go by the way i'm going to be back later <laughs> so don't worry but let me finish this this section here so i am software development Video games. I really. And uh, my favorite is Killer Instinct. There we go. And let's close this stack. There we go. So we are talking about myself a little bit here. So let's let me just answer something here. Let's save it. File. Uh, where is save? There we go. Okay, it's saved now. Here on Git is detected modifications to this file. So git add index and git commit with a message and it's going to be saying uh, add uh, a description of myself on index.html just to help me understand this there we go there we go. So everything seems to be fine now. Let me then. Uh, I need to copy and paste everything there. I guess I should. I just add in this paragraph here. So there we go. So now I copy in that. And down here, I'm going to paste it. And there we go nice and lean start next lesson reset code so we are going to leave it here for the moment i'm going to be back and uh before i leave i'm going to okay so here it says that i need to do a git push to publish my local commits to the remote so i'm going to do that git push and before I do that, I want you to see how this works actually. As you can see here, let me refresh, there is nothing else here. So after that command executes, this one here, it's going to upload to the internet, to the remote repo. Mm, okay. I wonder if it's cool. There we go, it actually works. So my remote repository, my remote is going to be updated with my new work here. There we go. You can see it here then. Let's watch the graphs, maybe. So here's the code. And there we go. We can see the history of the commits here. And as you can see here, here's the hash. Here's everything. There we go. Here are my three main commits and everything done so far. So uh, I'm going to be leaving it here. I'm going to be back later. I hope you can actually join me in my quest to become a, a full stack developer, by the way. So, uh, see